Today I wanted to show you my process for making 3D printed molds to create cost effective products using cast concrete. We're going to use these faceted candle holders as an example today because I was already making them for a client anyway, but you'll see this process can be applied to pretty much anything you can think of. In the first half of this video we're going to deal with the design and the creation of the molds using the computer and 3D printing. In the second half I'll show you how you go about casting products with some tips and tricks thrown in there along the way. My name is Rob, this is Further Fabrication, let's get into it. I'm using free software called Fusion 360 by Autodesk. I'll put a link below so you can all follow along at home if you want. The first piece and really only important piece of information we need is the dimensions of the candle. My candle has a diameter of 20 millimeters and is about 300 millimeters long. So I'll model that in Fusion by creating a sketch, choosing the circle tool, adding the dimensions and extruding out its length. I'm gonna move through this stuff quite quickly because it's the process that's important, not the individual clicks that I'm making. To create the object, I'm going to start by moving into the sculpt environment, creating a cube and then throwing in some rough dimensions. I'm hitting Alt 1 to toggle on box mode and now I can manipulate the cube by using the modify tool to change its shape and position. I'm just eyeballing the basic size and shape, trying to get the proportions right in a general form that I can use as a foundation to work from. Again I'm using the modify tool to adjust and manipulate the control points. I want to create a triangle faceted look to my candle holder. To do that I need to insert more edges into the form and move the points around until they protrude a little bit. Now Fusion's sculpt environment isn't big on creating triangles as it's based on T-spline quads which are better suited for creating more organic forms which you'll see how I deal with in just a sec. I also deleted the bottom face of the form technically leaving me with a surface instead of a watertight solid, which will be important in a moment when I turn this into a mold. Now that I don't hate this form, I can move out of the sculpt environment and it'll snap you back into the lovely organic form, which in this case isn't what I'm after. I'll hop back into sculpt, select all and crease the edges so that they hold their faceted form. Now this is a great time to double check how everything's looking by bouncing over to the render workspace to get a more realistic feel of how light and shadow are hitting the form. I thought some of the facets could pop a little bit more, so I'm going to jump back and adjust the shape slightly. Now to make the mold from this form, I need to create the negative of it. So back into sculpt mode, I'm going to use the thicken tool to offset the surface. I found a distance of 8mm to be about right, and instant mold, almost. You can see we've got ourselves an upside down cup, which would work as a basic mold, but we're going to do a bit better. Before we go any further, we need to have a little talk about draft angles and undercuts. In its most basic sense, undercuts and draft angles are all about making sure your form gets wider towards the opening so then your casting can just, you know, slide on out. Good way to get around undercuts is by creating multiple parts to your mold so the castings can just release easier. Which conveniently enough is what I'm going to show you how to do right now. Before I forget though, it's helpful to make the bottom edge horizontal because it's going to become the top edge when we pour our casting. To create a two part mold, I'll duplicate the body and then hide one. Then shift into the patch workspace so that I can modify the surface of the form. I select the place I want the molds to split and then delete the faces in that area, leaving me with half a mold. I can see that's left me with open edges, so I need to come in and close those up so that I have a solid form for 3D printing. To do that, I'll just use the loft tool and select the posing edges to close across. If you end up with gold faces instead of grey, don't sweat it, we just need to reverse the normals and flip them back around. Then I can join the new faces with the old ones with the stitch tool. And that's the hardest part done. To get the other half of the mold we repeat the exact same process with the duplicate body we created before but we just delete all the other faces. Before you go and pat yourself on the back there's still a couple more steps we need to do. First we need to create a flat spot for the mold to sit on as it's been cast. To make that I create an offset construction plane, project the edges here up to it and then create an extrusion back down to the surface and then just boolean join those back together. Second, we need to get the candle shape into the form. To do that, I simply boolean join the candle body and the mold body and then slice the exposed top off. If everything worked out, you should now be left with two solid bodies that fit nice and snugly together. Finally, we can export these out as STLs and drop them into your 3D print software of choice. I'm using just regular old slicer, aka Slick 3R if you want to say it like a weirdo. Make sure your orientation is all good with the flat side down and preview the print layers to make sure you haven't got any dangerously thin areas or other problems. And then we can go ahead and hit print. Printing in PLA with a 0.3mm layer height and a 10% infill. These parts need to be sturdy but they don't need to be like, like extreme.
what I'm going to do now is just go through, we'll clean up some of these edges, get rid of the artifacts left over from the 3D printing process, and that's so I can get a really nice tight fit between these two parts. I'm using a sharp chisel instead of sandpaper to do this. I find PLA doesn't sand that well on its own and will leave you with a fuzzy finish as it kind of likes to scuff and melt rather than sand nicely like ABS would. If you want to get a super nice finish, spray a few coats of filler primer on and sand that back instead. But that's really not necessary here. This is a crucial step. You need to lubricate your mold. I'm using petroleum jelly because it's easily available and I like the viscosity. That's a, that's a great word. Anyway, the viscosity helps create a more substantial barrier between the 3D print and the concrete going into it. Don't half-ass this either. Make sure you cover all the surfaces and get right into the nooks and crannies. Otherwise, this might happen. To hold the two halves of the mold together, I just snap a couple of rubber bands around it. You could use tape or zip ties, just whatever floats your goat. Now we can get on with the casting. You'll need a bag of your favorite concrete product. I'm literally using the cheapest stuff I could find. I think it's used for making the, the base of fence posts or installing fence posts or whatever. If it's got stones in it like mine does, you can just steal a sieve from the kitchen and deal with those. Because if they end up in the mold, it's pretty likely they're going to ruin any sharp corners that you have. I like to mix my concrete to a wet pancake batter consistency so it flows into the mold nicely. So just keep adding water and concrete till it seems about right. And then we can quickly pour it into the mold. Stop about half an inch towards the top so we can bang the mold a few times, loosen the air bubbles that might have formed. I found plunging around inside the mold also works really well to create a bubble free cast. And then top the mold off so it's just humping over the edge. Leave it to firm up a little bit and then trim that top hump off with a straight edge. Then just leave it alone. To find out whether the cast is ready to demold, I like to use the fingernail test. Basically you jam your fingernail into the surface and if it doesn't leave a mark, you're good to go. Remove the cast by lifting away one side and then tapping gently to get it to slide out. Now it's not fully dry yet so I recommend leaving it for a few days. Then if you feel like it, you can use some sandpaper to make the surface a little nicer and use some concrete sealer to protect it. But that's up to you. And now let's see the final product. So that's the process. You should now be able to make as many castings as you want from your 3D printed mold. Just re-lube and clean between castings and Bob's your uncle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.